Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today we're going to continue to talk about how chemical equilibrium is really intertwined with this idea of the proton transfer reactions that we see in acid-base chemistry. Now in this video, we're going to talk about describing some of the titration curves for a lot of the different combinations of acids and bases that we're going to see. We're going to talk about titration curves that involve what are known as polyprotic acids. And then lastly, we're going to talk about conductometric titration curves or titration curves that are developed as we look at the conductivity of the solution instead of the pH. All right, so the first thing we're taking a look at here are some of those strong, strong combinations. Uh, I think these are some of the easier ones to, to deal with and to recognize. Uh, important things to keep in mind as you think about strong acid, strong base titration. All right, so I think the strong, strong combinations are some of the easiest ones to deal with. Uh, the calculations of the pH on the different points along a titration curve uh, are very similar. Uh, you just have to you know, recognize that the starting pH and the ending pH will be different depending on whether you are titrating a strong acid with a strong base or you're titrating a strong base with a strong acid. Um, and then just be aware uh, then, are you solving for hydronium ion concentration or are you solving for hydroxide ion concentration? Uh, where the calculations again get a little more difficult, where you just have to remember to sometimes set up those equilibria situations, is where we have a weak acid with a strong base or a weak base with a strong acid. Uh, again, as you look at some of the important differences and similarities between the two, uh, recognize that the calculations are very similar regardless of whether it's a weak acid strong base or a uh, weak base strong acid combination. The big difference here is going to be again where the starting where the pH starts, where the pH finishes, and where the equivalence point is at. Uh, remember, in a weak acid strong base setup, the pH for the equivalence point is gonna happen in the basic range. For a weak base strong acid combination, uh, the pH at the equivalence point is gonna be in the acidic range. And then once again, just be aware, are you dealing with hydronium ion concentration or hydroxide ion concentration? And just remember the relationships between the two. And that brings us to our polyprotic acid titration curves. Uh, these uh, get really exciting. Uh, again, just keep in mind we're talking now about ionizing not one, but two or more uh, hydrogen ions. And when you use a diprotic acid, is which what you've got in your notes there, uh, with a strong base, if you've got uh, differences in their uh, their Ka1 and Ka2 values, uh, you'll get essentially two equivalence points. Uh, the first is going to show uh, the ionization of that first hydrogen ion, and then the second is gonna show the ionization of that second one. Remember, the ionization of polyprotic acids occur in steps. All right, and the only other thing to keep in mind when we talk about polyprotic acids, just recognize there that the volume required to reach that first equivalence point is identical to the volume required to reach the second one because the number of moles uh, of H2SO3 in that first step determines the number of moles of the hydrogen sulfite ion in the second step. Uh, so again, just an important thing to keep in mind about the titrations of polyprotic acids. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at what are known as conductometric titration curves where we're measuring not the volume of your titrant against pH, but the volume of your titrant against the conductivity. Now, in the example in your notes, we're titrating a strong acid with a strong base. Uh, and initially, we're going to have really high conductivity values in that acid solution because we have lots and lots of hydronium ion. But then as we add the base, uh, we essentially neutralize that and form a bunch of water and salt, uh, but our conductivity is going to decrease until we reach the equivalence point. And then recognize once you move past your equivalence point, you're gonna have lots and lots of hydroxide ions in solution, so your conductivity is going to increase again. So again, just be aware that you can perform a titration with a conductivity meter uh, to determine what the equivalence point is as well. As always, a quick reference to all of the images that were used in the PowerPoint presentation today. And we're done.